What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are in Arlington, Virginia for the Overland Expo East. We have the booth fully set up and on today's video we're gonna be showing you the top three Tacomas at Overland Expo East. All right guys, we have Wayland. Dude, you got yourself an awesome second gen Tacoma. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. It's beautiful, I love the white color and just the whole basically vinyl wrap that you went with. It looks yeah. incredible, man. You did a Thank great you. job. Tell me, tell me a little bit about how you started this. What inspired you to start your build? Oh, uh, well, I, I love the wild thornberries back in the day, so that was my huge, huge idea with it. Uh, and a, an adventure, adventurous family going throughout the whole world and seeing all the places that the world has to offer. And so that's what I named my company after, Smashing Adventures of what Nigel was talking about the whole time. That's really yeah. cool, man. Yeah. I used to watch that show also when growing up. Yeah. That's awesome to hear that. So I see you have some kings, you rock some total chaos, upper and lower controllers. Did mm -hmm. you decide to go with your full long travel kit? No, so I didn't do the, the long travel. I, I went with the mid travel because I thought that was good enough for me and for what I'm doing. So How do you like it so far? Is it something that you would recommend to someone, let's say, that has a daily Tacoma? Oh yeah, the mid travel is an amazing setup. It, if you don't do what the long travel people do, then I would not recommend getting it. Now obviously yeah. you do have to do some maintenance on it if not it starts to squeak. Yeah, they definitely need to grease it. Yep. So I see you have Pelfrey built front bumper. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a rare piece uh, among us now. Yeah, it's a piece of gold in the in this business. So. Do people reach out to you? Yeah, people want to get it. People want to buy it, and I'm like, no, I don't want to sell it. I love this bumper to death. So, so tell me, what's your favorite mod on this thing? Uh, it would probably be the deck system. Uh, I had a kid, so I can't put everything in the back seat anymore. So the deck system really helps out with all my camping gear. It's way more organized. If I want to go camping one weekend, all I got to do is throw in all the big items in the back and I can just go. That's awesome, man. I can actually relate. I got it myself. At the beginning, I was just like, man, it's taking up too much room. But in reality, everything is just extremely organized inside the deck system. Now I can't see myself taking that thing out. Yeah. Now tell me, if you could recommend one product uh, for the viewers as the first product, the first mod to do, what would it be? Uh, huge thing it would be the tires because you would be able to go many more places with the truck than running on your street tires and these are mickey thompson's correct yes mickey thompson 37s on 16 stealth so i love the stealth series how do you like the tires so far as far I, as wear and just overall off-roading off experience they're they're wearing perfect they do great in mud they do great on rocks sand they're overall an amazing amazing tire Awesome, man. Well, you got yourself a great looking second I appreciate gen. it. I'll see you next time whenever I'm in Virginia. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. Runner up, we have uh, Nathan here from CBI. Nathan, how's the show been so far for you? Oh, man? so far, so good. It's been great. That's awesome, man. Dude, your truck looks awesome. It wasn't until. Uh, up until Overland Expo West when we went out to do that photo shoot that I really wanted to showcase this truck, man. It's just beautiful. Yeah. The suspension okay, system on it is absolutely insane. It is. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about the armor. What do we have up in the front? I know you have something new for us. We do. So this truck's got our new, um, we're calling it our Covert Series, okay. which is our um, half bumper, very slim line, sleek built to fit with the factory bumper. Um, so it's got a brand new Covert Series bumper on the front, of course with a Warren winch and a very thick 30 inch light bar. Which looks so good on the bumper. Oh, it turned out awesome with the amber light bar in there. It really pops and you know, it gives it some color and some definition. For installation, there is gonna be some cutting required, but I do know that it's an easy process. Super simple, basically the black um, plastic piece that's right in that kind of bull nose center of the bumper. You pop that off and you just follow the curve of it. Super easy. We provide the trim that goes over the cut edge so it looks super factory. Nice man. What do we have for sliders? I do know that you guys are rocking something different than the CBI sliders that I have. Yeah, so this is just our standard rock slider. Nothing special, no kick out, no top plate, no nothing. This is just like the the original rock slider, how it was meant to be. I know that for your sliders, when you choose to have the top plates on it, there is no angle. So yeah, the standard one I think is just over 15 degrees. Once you get the kick out, it's a little deeper on the back end, so it goes down to about a 15 degree angle. And then like you said, with the top plates, it goes flat, so it's very usable and functional as a step. It's really minimal as far as clearance. A lot of our customers are now running the top plate just because it gives them a lot better um, foothold, you know, yeah. messing with stuff on their roof rack, whatever accessories they have up there, or even their bed rack. 
and it helps with the family. It's, the really, family yeah, it's really cool that you guys have the three options because for most of you guys out there, I mean, if you have a dog, you're gonna wanna have those top plates so they don't you know, bend their legs or possibly break them. Now let's go to the back, man. What do you have yeah. for the, the rear bumper? So we're running our high clearance rear bumper on the back with the dual swing arms. Um, we've got the bumper set up with tables on both ends. Uh, the rotopacks and the spare, of course. And honestly, with the high clearance rear bumper, man, you really get a lot of clearance. When we've gone out wheeling, it's, you know, when you're driving and you feel like it's gonna touch and it never does, you're just shocked. That yeah. It, that it never did. That's yeah. always a good feeling. You hate to hear that, <laughs> you know, the Yeah, man, and even if you do scrape it, I mean, it just takes the bang. Oh, yeah. yeah, put a little a little battle wound, a little, a little badge of honor in the bumper, yeah, it's all man. good. Now, I do know that that's also a uh, brand new Overland bed rack that you guys are working on. Is that the final design for it? This is the final design. Uh, this bed rack is going to be offered in several different height configurations, a um, cab height and a roof rack height nice. option. And uh, it's going to be released here in the next few weeks. Um, we're going to have them for the Tacomas, the Tundras, um, even some of the Chevy models that we're making for cool, now. Cool, man. I'm definitely going to have to get on board on that one because uh, lately we just keep getting more stuff for these shows. And <laughs> I know. It starts to add up and you really need the space. You also have the deck system. How do you like we it do. so far? I love it. It's awesome. Uh, matter of fact, we carry most of our gear, most of our recovery gear, um, our power needs, you know, charging boxes and all that. Um, I carry a ton of gear in there. I keep it packed all the time. Um, just kind of have my standard configuration of what I want in the truck and they're loaded up. Every once in a while, I'll pull a few items out of the small box on the side, throw my golf clubs in there yeah. in the summer, but for the most part, it stays loaded with all my gear. Would you be able to live without it? That's a question that I've asked myself. And I really can't, just because everything yeah. that's on it, I just picture it flying everywhere in the back of the, yeah. the tailgate. And, uh, it's So there's been a couple times we pulled it out for, for different R&D stuff that we're doing on the truck. And I'll be using my truck in the weekend. And honestly, constantly, I find myself without something. I need my tools <laughs> or my knife or whatever I was keeping in there. My deflators for the tires, you know, and I'm it's like, so crap, convenient. I don't have them. Yeah. So no, it's really nice and uh, you know, even with our bikes and stuff like that, we'll throw them off a, a mount on the back off the hitch or we'll throw them on our bed rack or even off the side of our bed rack. So cool. we can still carry all that stuff and, and you know, keep it all in the truck. Let's talk about your Prince roof rack. What are you carrying on it so far? So on this one, we've got our awning. Um, I'm running the Plano case on the other side. Um, in the middle, the roto packs and then the max tracks, carrying four max tracks on this side. Um, super awesome setup actually it's it's probably my most versatile setup now the plano case is big enough i can throw recovery gear in there nice. if for some reason i didn't have it in the deck system or whatever or even the you know honestly you're you're out swimming or whatever wet clothes or whatever yeah. throw them in the plano the case out of the way that's yeah. good man i like that now it's time to talk about the sweet spot in this truck apart from all its amazing armor Tell us about the icon setup that you have. What are you guys rocking? So we we decided to go all out on this truck. We really wanted to have some fun. So we went with their stage nine setup. It's basically the best they offer. Um, you've got their CDC valving front and rear. Um, we added on the front, we added their secondary shock okay. system. So same thing, um, they offer that secondary shock in, in their multiple configurations. So this one also has the CDC valving which makes it awesome on the front because you can calibrate both shocks for different scenarios and really have you know the whole gamut from small bumps to big bumps. It just dials it in perfect. And then on the back, of course, we're running their new, uh, their new leaf pack. Okay. We're running all the leaves because of the added weight. It works great. And then we're running their hydraulic bump stop setup as well. So, so if you want to go flying through the whoops or whatever, handles awesome i mean it's it's not a long travel but which it's i've a, actually seen nathan yeah. do so we went out uh overland expo west we went to do a photo shoot and man we were trying to do this drifting shot and man you were going <laughs> you're flying through this thing um it, it was awesome. really smooth it was really cool yeah. to see that yeah but dude thanks a lot for your time we really appreciate no problem, it you got man. yourself an awesome looking to come well thank you 
All right, guys, and for the final truck, I'm here with Jason and his beast. Man, definitely your truck stands out. Hey, How's man. it going, man? How's the show too. been so far? It's been great. I mean, it's awesome to um, be here at Expo East. I mean, we've been filming adventures on the East Coast and the Appalachian Mountains for like six years now, taking tours up into Canada and creating an opportunity for people here on the East Coast to really get into overlanding and to see everybody here in what used to be our home state which our home state now is in is in West Virginia. But to be here in Virginia and have all these people here, it feels like we kind of accomplished something. At least tried to bring more people to Overland Expo. More awareness. More that's awareness, yeah. That's absolutely. really cool, man. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your build. What do you have for armor? For armor, we're using an ARB Summit Series front bumper. We're using a Summit rear bar. Um, we've got the side rails, too. We've got ARB skids. Yeah, and armor on this truck. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. As far as suspension yeah. goes, because obviously you have tons of weight here, what did you guys decide to do with the overall suspension system and the leaf springs? Well, so the big deal with suspension and overlanding is building a package that can um, enhance your payload ability and enhance how the vehicle actually performs when it's loaded down. Because as you can see behind us, we got a ton of weight on the truck, right? Yeah. So we've got ARB Old Man EMU BP51s on the front and the back, okay? Um, the springs that we're using on the back here are the Dakar springs and the 96 series springs because we wanted something a little more medium weight. Okay. Um, so that when we take this camper out of the truck, we'll talk about that in a minute, when we take this camper out of the back of the truck, the truck doesn't ride too harsh and it's a good supple plush ride. Um, to complement the Dakar springs on a medium spring because we got so much weight here, we put Firestone airbags in. Oh, I did take a peek in Yeah, and all of that's tied into the ARB links that's sitting on the dash too so we can actually control the pressure in either bag separately or we can join them together and it actually serves as a pretty good tool when you get to base camp and you're trying to level things out with yeah. it too. And talk, talking about the ARB link system and that thing is sweet. Basically you get sort of like an iPhone looking device, right? You get a screen and you're able to access all of your, you can connect your lights, your air compressor. Yeah. I mean, We've got everything hooked up on it. The only thing we're not utilizing right now is the pressure control for actually inflating and deflating tires. We haven't installed that unit yet. It takes some time to get everything dialed in. You know, the BP51s have, um, you can adjust the compression, you can adjust the rebound, but you should be dynamically adjusting your vehicle suspension system when you have something like this because the weight is going to change. Now let's go ahead and go into engine bay. I did take a peek there and I saw that you have ARB's twin compressor. Tell me what else you have in there. I did see those sweet batteries. Yeah, so we've got two Odyssey batteries under the hood. Um, we've got the Air B compressor under the hood, and we've got a powertrain to keep our relay all tidy and stuff like that. Um, obviously, with something like this, we're going to need some more power, yeah. right? Um, and having a dual battery system, having a house battery and a starting battery, gives us the ability to expand. Um, you know, when we, what we have here as far as electrical on the camper itself. So. Awesome, man. Now let's go ahead and move on to the interior. What are you rocking inside? We've got the ARB links. Uh, we've got uh, the Garmin inReach and the Garmin Overland in there to help us navigate um, and keep in touch with our families when we're away from home. So we talked about most of the major things. Let's move on to this massive thing that you have here in the back. What is it called? Uh, this is called a Alu Cab Kayak Camper. Um, and this thing is a dream to stay in, a dream to keep organized. Um, we call it our off road moving van half the time because we're slinging gear in and out of it all the time. How much is the weight? Um, about 750 pounds. But your suspension system can take it. Oh, the suspension system can take it. Um, we're cognizant of how heavy the truck is and what are, where, where our limits are, you know? I mean, you gotta understand your braking ability when yep. you got all this weight on the truck. Yep. Um, which is something I'm probably gonna work on next is doing a big brake kit on the front. Because it's important to make sure that your family's safe when yep. you're doing stuff like this. Definitely, man. So what's in this thing? Um, this is the this is the Kaya Weekender, and the Weekender comes as kind of an empty box, and it allows you to customize it yourself with what you feel like you need. And we need to keep a lot of space open in there. We don't need seats and drawers and stuff like that because we're slinging uh, Pelican cases in there, or drone cases, or backpacks or swag tents and stuff like that too. So what we have in here is is really the essentials. Okay. It's some some storage solutions from Blue Ridge Overland Gear on the walls. Um, we've got water. Water's really important. <laughs> Definitely. We've got water. We got an uh, ARB Element fridge in there, um, and we got a nice little table from GP Factor in there as well. It gives us an opportunity to maybe to download some 
download some video on a hard drive or something like that while we're on the trail. And it gives you a nice working space. But up top is where the where the prize is, right? The bed folds up and folds down. When it's up, it allows you to stand freely inside there that you can change. I mean, it, unless you're over eight and a half foot tall, you're not then gonna you're be gonna touching, have, then yeah. you're gonna have a problem, right? <laughs> so, but you drop the bed down and we've got an X-Bed Duo 7 um, air mattress on there. It's nice. three inches thick. It's like sleeping on a water bed. That's super right. Now, comfortably, how many people can be there where you know, either standing up or sleeping? Well, we tried it at Expo West last year. We had eight people inside. No. Yeah, really? we did. Um, comfortably, my wife, my five-year-old and I can sleep up top and we've got three dogs and we put them in the bottom. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, so it's really nice. Now, as far as installation goes and also removing it, how easy is it? We actually just did a video on that on YouTube uh, a few weeks ago. The install time is around 15 minutes. Okay. And I'm going to make sure to put a link to that video below, so make sure to check it on the description section. Awesome. Thank you. So, in 15 minutes, I can put the stands on this. I can lower the stands, unbolt the four anchor points on this camper and have it out of the truck in 15 minutes. Wow. It goes in just as fast. It can be a little bit tricky to yeah. line things up if you're by yourself yeah. because it's a really nice fit in there, but um, you know, maybe 20 minutes to get it in the truck. Wow, man, that's actually pretty good for the size of the stuff. Yeah, and the great thing about it is you can just leave all your kit in there, yeah. unload it, and then you got a pickup bag in no time. Yeah. yeah. So you can have it as a daily, and then whenever you go on an adventure, you can slap, slap it on and take off, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. It's good to go. There's some really cool solutions for, you know, canopy campers and stuff like that. But this fits our needs because we do. We've got, uh, you know, we've got a horse, and we're going to have a horse soon. My wife's going to get one. A horse? But, yeah, a horse. No way. So we, we got to be able to move hay. we got to yeah. be able to move seed. If we're doing landscaping, we got mulch. Um, and we like to ski in the wintertime, and we take the kayak camper out and throw the skis in the back and go to the resort. Cool. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great platform. Um, as you can see here on the outside, we've got um, power management. So you got to keep the cameras charged. And then there's just other storage around as well. Propane on the back for heat up the scottle and having cool. a good dinner. But, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Dude, one more question for you. Yeah. If you had to recommend one product for the viewers as far as the number one product to get, you know, at the beginning, the first product, the must have, what would it be? Like the best question. You always, you always get that. It's always fun to answer that. I've, that is the one I, question that you're, I, you're always hearing. There's it depends what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, it all depends it, it, on what you're doing. The worst, the worst experience is, yeah, is getting a, a dent in your rocker panel. So whether it be just driving over a big log and whacking the side of your yeah. truck or, or landing on a rock, I, I always go for awnings and sliders. Okay. Because uh, the ability to get out of the rain yeah. comfortably yeah. And, and stay out of the sun comfortably, you can do that with a good awning, right? Um, if you're hitting the trail straight out of the gates, get some sliders because you're going to screw something up and you're going to cut some stuff. And it's 100% like you said, it depends on what, where you guys are taking your build. Uh, if you're going full on overlanding and you know, the main entrance at first is not to really hit the trails but to go camping, then you want to want to get the awning, right? Yeah, then you want to get the awning. I mean, you, you just got to get out there and do it and feel like you have some sense of what you feel like needs to be the next level. Some people may say put a canopy on your truck. It depends if you got a truck or a forerunner or whatever, right? Obviously, we're talking about Tacomas because we love Tacomas. <laughs> it's um, all about the taco, guys. It's all about the taco. So, yeah, I mean, some people say tires first, but on my list all the time is either a slider or on the first out the trail. Definitely, man. Now, Jason, tell me, where can our, our viewers find your channel, your Instagram? What's the best way to reach you? You can find us on Instagram at msoverland.com. And you can find us at YouTube at mountainstateoverland.com. Awesome, man. I'm going to make sure to put, again, guys, a link on the description below. Jason, uh, thank, thank you for your time, man. It's been awesome. Great to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. You, too. All right, guys. That about wraps it up for this video. Those were the top three Tacomas at Overland Expo East. Do wish I had a little more time to go check out the camping, uh, the camp spots out there. If you guys saw a Tacoma out here that you thought should have made the video, I'm interested to know. Leave a comment on the comment section down below. And if you guys think that there's anyone that should be featured on our page, make sure to leave their Instagram handle down below. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video.